Hello all, and welcome back to another episode of The Root of All Ashley, the podcast where you learn interesting facts, such as the knowledge of needing to clean your sex toys is how the priest came up with baptisms. I'm your host, Ashley, and with me is Adrian. I really don't have a response to that. As long as your dishwasher is safe, that's all that matters. How are you doing? Oh, good. Did you have to mute yourself? Were you on mute? No, I just took a second to respond to that because that took me off guard. Um, you told me you had a special intro, so it really took me off guard. But anyhow, it's been a minute, but welcome back to The Root of All, Ashley. How have you been these days? I've been busy. I have been sick. It has been, it has been for the last month and a half. We're a little over a month since our last recording. And our last recording was that very chaotic episode where all four of us and our two guests were went on uh rambling rampages and you and I just kind of zoned out on there yeah you know it was a proverbial cock block of podcasts but I mean it you know it uh, garnered entertainment people were loving it so I mean all we have to do is sit back and let them go so I mean it was a good show nevertheless but today it's you and I flying solo as solo as two people can be so and it's been a minute since you and I did a solo show too because for quite a so many episodes we either had Sarah or Jeffrey on as a guest so I mean this is it, it feels weird it feels like home but it feels weird at the same time where it's just two of us yeah absolutely I mean I guess I'll take my shoes off and wipe my feet at the door um, just you know make sure we have dinner ready because this can be quite the intimate setting between you know a co-host and the host of the show I mean I don't know how to act it's pretty weird I keep looking for you know for other people to chime in you know Jeffrey to come in with his messed up microphone, Sarah to give interesting facts about history, and Jeffrey to have another messed up microphone. So it's... it's yeah, and then I know that you and I have had a brief conversation. I know you and I should will have a more in-depth conversation about, about working on a schedule because it is nice to have a guest, but, you know, it's also good for it to just be you and me, which is what the original show has always been like. So I feel like we do a schedule, like, you know, every two to three episodes, it's just you and I and then we have a guest or we just we just kind of come up with it and i think like once in a blue moon we'll we'll fit in a chaotic show with four people again not something i want all the time but like once in a while we'll surprise people with just pure chaos it's like having that crazy uncle come over i mean <clears throat> he's entertaining but after a while you know he begins to say some pretty rude things and defending the children and you know creeping out grandma he's good to have once in a great while but after a while you know we need to have them sporadically, so I, I understand. And of course, we're not calling Sarah and we're not calling Jeffrey, you know, the creepy uncle or anything. No, no, we're just. I am. Of course you are. But we digress. They, they both own it. They, they know they're creepy uncles. They're going to listen to this and they're like, yeah, we're creepy uncles. And, and, they'll, and they're going to own it. And they're like, fuck yeah, I am. Well, I mean, as long as they have, Ty, as long as they have their Tyrone with them. I really think they'll be okay. So, I mean, I know they'll understand. Shout out to Sarah and Jeff, wherever they may be. Praise me, baby Jesus. <laughs> so, what is a topic of discussion today? Seeing as how we've had a little hiatus for this show. Where have be you been? Honest, man, I don't know what the topic is for today. I've had, like, so many ideas crossed in my head. But I'm like, no, that's boring. No, I don't really feel passionate about talking about that. I have no idea what I want to talk about today. Well, don't feel bad. I'll let you in on a little secret. Every single time I do my show on Fridays, I have no earthly idea what I'm going to talk about. But the moment I hit record, for whatever reason, I can babble for 20 minutes and have it be meaningful and deep and entertaining. So I figure right now at the five minute mark, we've been entertaining so far, so we can keep on rolling with it. Yeah, I know, especially with that opening, um, you know, introduction. That was that was definitely entertaining. Um, I mean, it's not my Helen Keller introduction, but it's something. I think the besties with the testes, I mean, that to me was ranked among my top five. I mean, I don't know if you can top that one or not. Besties with the testes. <laughs> so let's inform the listeners what we've been up to. You know, and of course, you know, the sickness is going around, not the COVID or <laughs> SARS or or the, you know, the Ebola or anything, just a regular flu has been going around. I caught it, you caught it, and to keep our listeners up to speed, how are you feeling after all this fun stuff? Well, I'm feeling better. I, I have a cough. It's very annoying. It happens in the wrong time, and it's just, or at least annoying. 
I was I was down and out for for sure a week and a half, but it took me like another week to just kind of feel better. And I know we haven't recorded for a while because originally, since our last show, for two weeks I wasn't able to record because during that time there was a big change happening in my company, and I volunteered to do overtime where I was staying after work until like seven seven thirty every night and picking up all this extra time, and then. Right after that, that was over, um, I ended up getting sick. And so that, so it's basically been a month and really not a whole lot that is new. I mean, there is some new things here and there, but not huge, but you know, just living life, living la vida loca. Oh, interesting. Um, <clears throat> after my son's graduation, I mentioned on my other podcast, um, after my son's graduation, the very next day. I got sick. I was down for a week and a half working on top of that, and recovery just sucks. Um, people can hear it in my voice a little bit. It's still kind of scratchy. It's still a little bit of cough, but it's nothing new. Everybody got the same thing that we got. I just call it we got the suds, and for people who know that reference, congratulations. For the people who don't know that reference, Google it, folks. When you got the suds, you know how it feels like. Yeah, so quick question. Now that your son has graduated, have you kicked him out the front door yet? No, not yet. I mean, it's been pretty enticing here and there to kick him out and, you know, go on this old man tangent where I just sit on my lazy boy, scream at clouds and yell at kids to get off my lawn and, you know, you know being that single guy in the house with nothing to do. It's pretty interesting, but, you know, I still see my little one as little. I still see him as that five, six-year-old kid that runs around and you know plays around and stuff like that and i get to witness what he's doing um but now being 18 and knowing everything in the universe and uh it's just it's pretty interesting as you know it's like looking at a movie you're just sitting back and just watching the current goings on with him and coupled with the fact that um, he just released a five uh song album um, on top of that we we're promoting that too so that's another little thing he's working on so so this reminds me about five six years ago when you and I used to work together and I would come up to him like hey soon in a few years your son's gonna get taller he's gonna have a deep voice he's gonna go through puberty he's gonna graduate high school and you would just be in despair going no shut up no no I'm not listening to this and look here we are Yes, I looked at pictures from five years ago at myself versus now. I still look the same, thank heavens, or whatever people think. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting to know that a person like me can actually spawn a child from my scrotum uh, for 18 years. And I just, it was an interesting feat. It's a miracle. I don't think I can do that again. My scrotum couldn't hold up. And uh, I say the word scrotum a lot. And I don't think I can uh, really do that again. I think I'm pretty much a one and done kind of guy. And so now if I want any other children, I came up with an idea of uh, if I ever choose to adopt. And uh, do you want to hear it? It's entertaining. Oh, for sure. So I thought adopting a kid, an Asian kid, and giving him a black name like Demetrius and giving him dreadlocks to really confuse his heritage, um, maybe adopting a Filipino girl and naming her Sean and give her her blonde hair. Just little things to challenge them as they get older. Granted, I may screw them up for life, but it's entertainment for me. And uh, and don't worry, people, I feel you're judging me. This is all humor. So what do you think? I mean, that's a good plan. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it can be a little traumatic and mindfuckery, but I mean, it, I guess it kind of is better and more hands-on parenting than my idea if I were to create offspring. Because my idea, whether it's adopting or I create them myself, uh, <clears throat> my idea is to leave them in the woods, allow them to raise themselves, just like, you know, Bartons would do. And then when they're 18, they come to my front door and they're going to be like, mother, and I'm going to be like, child, I have survived, mother. I was like, good, good. Now go off into the world. And they're like, goodbye, mother. I'll be like, goodbye, child. And that's it. It'll be a very good bonding experience between the two of us during the, that 30 second period. Um, there will be inner emotions, inner tears, but neither of us will, you know, convey those emotions because that would show weakness and we don't roll that way. And as my child walks off into the sunset, I'd be like, goodbye, you little bastard. 
and never to be seen again until I have grandchildren and they'll co- they'll show up too when they're 18 they'll be like grandmother and I'd be like grandchild they're like we have also survived they'll be like that is also good I'm gonna go die in a, in a bit they'll be like okay goodbye grandmother but like, goodbye grandchildren and then I'm gonna go croak so you're basically get, so you're basically going to bird box them not give yes, them any names okay. and just call them daughter son grandchild Oh, no, they're going to have their own names, but they're going to have to choose it. I don't give it to them. And you don't, these children have to learn that no one gives you anything. You have to take it for yourself. So they will choose to name themselves. I will not. If they decide to tell me that they've chosen their name, I will love to hear it. But they're also strong. They don't, they know that they don't have to tell me anything. They just simply need to inform me that they have survived and that I was successful in birthing an offspring. And that's it. That's all that really needs to be done. They will live their own lives. They will name their own names and they will do whatever the fuck they want. Ashley, the visionary. Um, I kind of want to piggyback on this a little bit. Now, I know we talked off mic before, just a couple of times here and there throughout the years. You're not a big fan of spawning children. And of course, I'm not even going to dig into that because that's something that's none of my business and I don't even want to talk about that but (laughs) but would you ever consider doing it as the years go by no um so to okay between my husband and i we have no intentions of having children we don't want children but if it happens it happens we're going to be parents and we're going to do our best but i just don't have maternal instincts and i hear it from so many people Oh, they'll kick in once the baby is born. Oh, you'll feel different. Listen, I'm not, despite jokes, I know I'm not a monster. I don't want kids. I make the jokes how I hate children. All that. Now, if I end up becoming pregnant and I have a baby, I'm not going to full on hate it. Of course, I'm going to feel love for it. But there's also going to be a lot of regret and all these other feelings uh, of resentment that I'm going to try my best not to push onto the kid, but it can happen. And that's why I don't want and when people try to tell me something otherwise, I'm, the, I'm very quick to tell them, I was raised by two people who never wanted kids. I know what it's like to be raised by two people. With my dad, not so much. He never wanted kids, but he always wanted a girl. So he was not a great dad to my three brothers, but he was a wonderful dad to me. So that's slightly different. But other, but he doesn't mean he was top-notch parent either. And then my mom never wanted a kid. And she ended up having two. And I was raised by her. So I was raised by two people that never wanted to be parents. So I know what it's like to be a child. I know I was loved. But I could have had a lot better childhood if they probably had those paternal instincts. So, again, if we have kids, if it happens, it happens. Because we do things that can lead to children. So I can't say never unless my plumbing gets removed, which I'm gonna try to do when I'm like 30 31 see if I can do that but um so it's just yeah I just don't have the feeling I just don't look at kids I can see a baby or a toddler and I can recognize that they're cute that they're adorable I'm like oh look it's it's cute when it's not screaming and messing up with my shit at my desk at work but I don't look at them and think oh I wish I could have one I just don't I don't feel that pull I don't feel that attachment I just, there's no desire there that's like, I want one, I want to take care of one, I want to cuddle and hold one. I just don't feel those things. Oh, and I don't blame you whatsoever. Without getting into a big long anecdote, I've always made the joke that I can barely dress myself, more or less another human being, and having a child would be scary and terrifying and exciting and terrifying and scary, and on top of that terrifying. Um, but. You know, and I'll try to save this cliche of, you know, your whole world changes when you have a child. Bizarrely enough, it did for me because I told the story multiple times. After I had my son, I held him up and he peed on me. And I figured, you know, he has comedic timing, so I figure I'll keep him for a while. And then his first words was, Dad, Dad. I'm like, okay, fine. You worked really hard at this. You practice. So I guess I'll keep you along. But, um... Yeah, that wasn't really on my to-do list for the longest of times. I mean, I've always wanted to have one later on in life. But of course, you know, things happen. Deep hugging made a child. And uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting thing because I didn't have those 
um, you know, maternal instincts, but they quickly, yeah, they quickly hit because uh, the other party did not have maternal instincts whatsoever, but that's a whole other story. So fast forward 18 years later, I still can't believe I raised and nurtured and all this fun manly stuff with another child and he's actually doing well because I would have thought he would have looked at me and said, would you like fries with that? But no, he's actually intelligent and does his own thing. And as I sit here with this blank father look on my face, looking around going, ask your mother, I'm just still shocked. But I truly believe if you, excuse me, not if or if or when you choose to have an offspring, I think you will truly teach, teach that child, you know, your version of sarcasm and, and, and the ways of the world and they will grow up pretty damn well but that's just my opinion no no doubt because i see the pure example with just my nephews and niece from my oldest brother because my oldest brother and i are very much like almost like 90 percent the same personality wise and how he's raised his kids and the sense of humor that they have it goes very much hand in hand with how we are so i mean I, i i will share you a screenshot of a conversation because we have a group chat on Snapchat. That's my sister-in-law, my three oldest nephews, and my oldest niece, and myself. And I nicknamed this group chat well over a year ago when we started it. I nicknamed it the Trojan Complaint Department. (laughs) And we joke on it all the time. It's almost every day, or at least once a week, if anything, that we're always messaging each other, sending pictures, roasting each other. They have the same humor, so no doubt in my mind, if I have a child, it it will probably come out the same as those kids, which would be pretty good because those kids are far much better people than my brothers and myself. Now, no doubt my life would change, of course, if I have a kid. But again, I, I really don't want one. I just don't. I don't. I Because I want to be able to do things my life. I'm selfish. I want to be able to spend my free time relaxing, watching TikTok, playing with my dogs, go out drinking. I want to travel, and these are all things that, for a good period of time, I would have to give up because the child comes first, and I'm not going to leave my child to go out and party and drink and hang out with my friends when I have a baby or toddler or child at home. I don't, I don't want to do that. I didn't have the option of having a babysitter, but I don't want to be that kind of parent that leaves their child. Like it's fun to have like a date night, go out once in a while. That's something different. But I would have to give up a lot of things, a lot of things in my routine, a lot of things I enjoy because I would have to put the child and its needs first because I understand that because as a parent, that's what you should do. Your child comes first and then that's going to be my life for 18 years minimum. And on top of that, with how things are nowadays, I don't want to raise a kid here. And my husband and I have actually talked about this. If we had kids, we would not be raising our children here. We would be raising them in his country because fuck it, fuck this place here to raise kids. Um, but I just, I really, I think the day if I ever found out I was pregnant, I would probably break down crying because I would not want it. And there's a video clip from a show that I should probably send you. It's basically this woman's best friend explaining to the husband of her best friend because the best friend's pregnant, doesn't want the kid. And is considering you know, Planned Parenthood, which is not something I would consider if I was pregnant, but this person was. So the best friend was explaining to the husband, you know, if this person who does not want to be a mom, that she will have the kid and she will hate herself for never loving the kid like she should, because she's going to raise it. She's going to love it and she's going to do her best, but there's going to be a lot of baggage that comes into that kid that's going to go into that kid unintentionally. Because once again, I was raised by two people that did not want to have kids. So I know what it's like firsthand. My nephews and niece were raised by people that started having kids way too young, as in teenagers, and never really wanted to be parents, but they became parents. So it's it's different than someone that ever just never really had an opinion about kids or someone that always wanted kids and they had a kid versus people that flat out hate the idea of being parents and become parents. It's completely, I wouldn't say completely different, but it's definitely a different side of the coin. And it's, it's not great. It's again, I have, I have good childhood memories. No doubt that my parents, you know, love me. 
but there's a lot of emotional baggage and trauma that came with this. And I just would not put that on my kid I, because I know I'm not a great person, despite what everyone says, I know I have a heart, but I'm very selfish and I'm very emotional. And I know myself, I will unintentionally take my emotions out on the kid. I will do things like, not like abusive or anything, but I just know I will make a lot of mistakes, which is what parents do. But I will make mistakes kind of like what my parents would probably have made, if not worse, if not different, but still bad. I just, I don't want any of these things. I don't want to bring a kid into the world when it wasn't wanted. I rather a kid goes, I rather that energy, whatever controls the universe, I rather that energy goes to parents that want kids, that are struggling to have kids, let them have that kid. Let the energy absorb from my body and go to somebody else that wants kids. Of course, and I understand that 100%. I just find it ironic, you know, that the universe, you know, is like, here you go, guess what we're going to do for you? And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess this, this is what we're going to do. And it changes your whole mindset, and I'm not trying to talk, you know, to talk you up to having one, of course, but I'm just explaining from my point of view, just the universe just changed everything, because now when I go to the store, the main thing I think is, maybe he'll like this, maybe he'll like this. And do I really need a pair of socks today? No, I wait till next week. My ass holes in them. I can walk and feel my feet through them. But no, I think, you know, he'll benefit from this separately. But it's just an interesting, it's an interesting thing to have an offspring and that you look at and you see yourself in that offspring and know that the dumb shit that they do is the same dumb shit you've done. And now you have to explain to them why you shouldn't do the same stupid shit that you've done years ago. It's a total mindfuck, as you would say. And now since that portion of my life, I'm not saying I'm done, but that portion of my life is complete. I've had my you know, friends ask me, do you want another one? I'm like, I'm 46 years old. I don't think that's in the cards. I'll get a dog. I think, I think I'm fine with that because I'm more of a loner than anything. And to piggyback on what you said, nothing wrong with being selfish because you understand who you are and what you want and you're not going to compromise that you know for anything so i definitely applaud you on that one is just in my case it was a whoopsie here we go and i haven't looked back since and that and i have that basic no regrets kind of thing going on so i you know i can definitely understand that too you have animals so you raise them fairly well so i definitely applaud you for that because i suck with cats and dogs yeah, I'm definitely a dog person. I'm not perfect or anything, but I try to do the best. I, I love that I can do everything for my German Shepherd, who's going to be two years old in September, that I couldn't do with my Labrador, who is 14 and a half now, and he's still going strong. He's still very healthy for his age. Like, even the vet who he saw about a month, month and a half ago was like, no, I will actually argue with you if you try putting this dog down. He's still very healthy, and it's very much shocked my vet or my vet has asked exactly what do I feed him or how much, how often, because I put a lot of supplements, not a lot, but it's the routine of how I feed my dogs and what I feed my dogs and what goes into their food and how often that really takes into effect of how healthy they stay. Um, but that's where I'm fortunate where, where I, how I live my life and my husband and I have the means to pay for this extra stuff for my dogs. So I'm kind of glad I can do that. And, um, Again, going back to if I had kids, no doubt, I, I would try my best to be a good parent. I would want to do things for the, like as all parents do, is you want to do stuff for the kid that you couldn't do as a kid. And so it's, I don't know. And I, again, it goes, and so I understand what you're saying. You're not trying to convince me or give me your standpoint, which I respect. And, you know, because you have a kid and now the kid is, you know, preparing to leave the nest. He's right there at the edge of the tree branch or the cliff or however you want to imagine it and he's about to take off and you know that's another whole scary moment right there how are you feeling about that i don't know um it's a mixture between you know breaking down into sobbing tears man tears mind you man tears and um just really taking a step back and reflecting on everything um, because, of course, you know, you know, your job as a parent is never really done, whether it be a child or a pet. Um, and it's time to live that life number two I've always preached. 
you know, because I understand that he's his own man now. Obviously, I'll always be there for him and, and, and continue to nurture him. But now it's that, okay, now what kind of ideal? I can continue to work or I can travel or I can work on another book, continue to do more of a podcast, more animation. Or have another kid. I would need someone to do that with. Um, someone that I can, you know, really trust and look at that investment instead of just willy nilly, let's have a kid kind of thing. Because after having one, you have the expectation of, you know, who you're going to choose to have another child with, because that's really important. Um, I just think for now, it's just traveling. I need to start traveling again and rediscover who, who I am, as silly as that sound, being 46 years old. So I figure after a couple of years of traveling, you know, then the ideals of adopt, have another one, or just live out the rest of my days kind of peacefully doing the things that I continue to love. So, but hypothetically speaking, where do we see Miss Ashley in about five years? Oh, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I, no, I'm serious. I really don't. So I pretty much just kind of go with the flow um, because the number one person I have in my life is my husband. I have my mother, I have my grandma, I have my older brother, and I have his kids, but these are all people that aren't my main focus in life, if that makes sense. So I, as in, I don't play my life around them. And so my life revolves around my husband. And my husband is clearly the breadwinner between us. His, he's the one that does a lot of the plans for us. And I'm not saying that as in, I don't get a say so in my pain. It's not that, it's, I just really don't care. I don't have things that keep me rooted into the ground in one spot. So, and I'm not really goal oriented as in where I want to go career wise, where I want to move to next. I don't feel those things. I'm just like, you know, I'll just go where the wind takes me. I'm more oriented of like, I, I like the idea of traveling. But so when my husband tells me, hey, we're going to move next year, we're going to go to this city next, or we're going to go to that state, or we're going to go to this country, I'm like, okay, cool. So, I mean, even to the point that one day he's going to want us to move us to his country. I'm fine with that too. So in five years, I have no idea where I'm going to be at. I just hope that I'm still happy. I'm healthy. I'm with my husband. And we're just living life. And where we are, to me, doesn't matter. Just as long as I'm with him and I'm happy, I'm a okay. Now see, I truly wish more people thought like you. And I'll tell you why. A good chunk of us worry about the future a good chunk of us always try to plan out what we're going to do from moment to moment to moment versus living in that moment now it's going to sound kind of hypocritical because i've always tried to preach to people you know do what you love find your passion and think about what you want to contribute to this earth because if you're just here willy-nilly you're just a meat with eyeballs so i'm kind of i'm going to kind of contradict myself by saying i admire the fact that you don't have any plans you know that you're not stressing yourself out to what you're going to do in five years or, or, or whatnot. You know, I guess it's just two different, two different ideals. Um, because I know what I would like to do in next upcoming years before my time expires, you know, and I do want to try to contribute something to the world before I go. And I figured with the podcast and the animation and the writings and stuff like that, I leave a legacy behind. But on the flip side, I do want to have that ideal like you to where okay we're gonna go somewhere okay let's go hey what do you want to do today or what do you want to do next month I don't care you know either we do something or we don't it is what it is um, it's just something inside me won't, won't allow me to do that and once again it's not a detriment you know to how you live your life and how you see things I just want to have a purpose and I just want to plan to do things so it's that little like a little odd dichotomy you know, that you and I have, and it meshes quite well on the podcast. Oh, by all means, um, I have super anxiety about the future. Not about what I want to do or where I want to be. It's the fear of what can happen. I'm always in fear that I'm, like, my biggest fear is I'm going to lose my husband. I don't, I want to live far into old age with my husband. I'm, I'm terrified that in a few years something will happen, because you never know what can happen tomorrow. But I'm just terrified, you know, that something can happen. Uh, that's what so I always so I fear the unknown and I get anxiety and I tell myself to not worry about it so 
but as in planning for myself and where I want to be exactly, that stuff I don't care about. Again, it just comes down to all I want in life is just to live a long and happy life with my husband. That's it. That's all I want. Um, doesn't matter where. And that's it. I like the idea that we travel. We can go do all the things that we want to do when we want to um, and have fun with our friends in the meantime. And it's just, it's just really honestly just loving life. That's it. I mean, him and I, we don't really make plans either. What we're, what are we going to do for the weekend? We don't really usually know until towards the end of the week. Maybe we plan to go and do something with our friends. Or we just simply sit at home and have a lazy weekend. Or we go out and do a little shopping. I mean, we just kind of go with the flow. And we're okay with that. Yeah, there's nothing really wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, that takes care of, you know, the worriness and stuff of that nature. But with your anxiety and the whole what-if scenario... Now, once again, that's something you and I differ on. I don't worry about anything. And that comes with the caveat of not getting into a long story, but almost, but I almost passed away, you know, years ago. And that changed my whole outlook on life. So I don't get mad. I don't worry. I try to be emotionless when it comes to life because I've almost experienced death. So everything after that... It's kind of inconsequential. So I, you know, I live my life not necessarily by the seat of my pants, but I'm just very zen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I try not to let anything bother me, which, thank God, up to this point in time, I've done a pretty good job at it. So in saying that, when I, when I now am going to start traveling again, I'm going to do the same thing you're doing. I'm just going to just enjoy life but I'm not really gonna worry about the negative what ifs. Because if you lay your head heavy on the what ifs, eventually you're gonna put out there in the universe and something bad's gonna happen. Me, I'm just go along with the flow and if something happens, something happens. I've survived this long. So when it's my time, it's my time. Other than that, I'm going to Japan, I'm going back to Germany, and I'm going to Brazil for a while. So, you know, like, you know this, is what I, this is where I see myself in the next two years. Well, nice. Well, so, and like as you said, I understand that hanging on to the what us. It's kind of like when I'm in a moment and I let my anxiety hit me, but I try not to think about this stuff because then, like, what's living if I'm going to constantly worry about the future? Um, it's just kind of in a way, I'm very dependent upon my husband, like emotionally dependent, because he really has been the center of my life since we met. Because I grew up not having much family, and what little I had was not very reliable and wasn't really that great for me. And so I kind of grew up very lonely and not knowing what it felt like to be treated right from friends, from relationships, from family, it, nothing. And here comes my husband and he's exactly kind of what I am in our life. So it's not like I'm dependent that I can't do anything without my husband, but it's just that he's kind of like it's like sitting out in the warm sun and just feeling the warmth and you just feel relaxed and everything's just okay and good in your life and that's how I feel when I'm with him and so that's kind of like where I'm at and here in about two years well because we're gonna be married for eight years in September and in 10 years or not in 10 years for our 10 year anniversary we're kind of you know nothing hard set it's just kind of conversation I like the idea that we take about two weeks and we travel through Europe. Just, you know, go to the flow or go just do something for two years, for not two years, two weeks. Just him and I, and we just go do whatever the hell we want to do. Because I remember my what for my mom, she's told, she brought this idea to me a while ago, like a couple years ago. And it sits with me in kind of a humor way. She would tell me, oh, for your 10 years, you should plan like a big, huge party and do a reception because you didn't really have one for your wedding. Because at my wedding, the only people that were there besides my husband and I were my parents, my grandparents, my best friend, her parents, and her two kids. No one else in my family. My brothers didn't want to come. No one else in my family. Um, I didn't really invite any of my friends. I was trying to keep it very small and intimate because my husband couldn't have any of his, fr his friends or family there because all of them are in this country. So that's why I didn't invite any friends. And I know I hurt a few of my best friends by not inviting them, but, but I explained to them, I said, 
I was really only having this close like family that was it because I couldn't do a big wedding and I didn't want to invite I only invited my the best friend which was Shauna at that time she's still best friend now but she was the best friend then and so these are so you know a bunch of people that couldn't have been bothered to show up you know for my wedding back then I did ask to show and told my mom why would I bother spending money to plan a party and pay all this money to make it so awesome so all these other people that couldn't have been bothered to show up to my wedding in the first place get to enjoy it. Now, it's something different if it's a bunch of friends that I met after my wedding because, you know, like for you, for example, you, I mean, I didn't know you when I got married, so you don't count in that because, you know, for obvious reasons. But I don't want to celebrate my husband and I by catering to other people. Don't want to do it. Now a whole bunch of people are like, hey, we're gonna throw you a party and we're all gonna pay for it. You don't have to pay for anything. I'm like, okay, cool, we'll do that. But I don't wanna go through the planning to make other people feel happy when it's a celebration for my husband and I. Um, and even so, I wish I can go back to when we got married. The only reason I wanted an actual wedding was for my parents, especially my dad, so my dad could walk me down the aisle. But let's say things were different. I would have done something a lot smaller, as in just having my parents only there and us doing like a destination kind of thing, something very private, something that we would have liked and only having my parents and I would have been happy with just that. And kind of, but going back to what I was saying with the reception, um, I don't want to put money towards people that kind of been bothered in the first place. And that's why still to this day, hardly anyone has seen my wedding photos. Only one or two have I actually shared on my social media. And even then, I continually shared the same photos over the years. But everything else for my wedding, my wedding video, my all everything else part of it, I've never shared um, on my social media. I haven't shared with many people. No one's really seen these. I've had people in the past ask me, oh, when do we get to see your wedding photos? Well, you could have seen them firsthand if you actually showed up to my wedding. You know, uh, my oldest brother, I've forgiven him. We've gotten very close and he's seen my wedding photos. But a lot of other people, I can't really think of anyone else besides my husband, and my parents and my grandparents that have actually seen the full wedding photo and album or video and album because I'm very salty and I am very private in that in that sense. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I've said for years I'm a very private person, and not a whole lot of people know, you know, too much about my life. Um, I let people know what I want them to know. So I trust me, I don't hold it against you. And to to reiterate, like I said before, I'm a little bit envious, you know, because you know you had that you, you had that wedding and you had that person that you hold so near and dear to you, which is definitely a good thing. Me myself, once again, I'm just such a loner because of life experiences, which I'm not going to get into, it's inconsequential again, um, you know, that, that, that makes me into the loner I am today. And I'm so comfortable with who I am and being by myself is a tremendous feeling. So when I take these trips or when I take these promotions and stuff like that, it's just another aspect of my second life because the first part of my life, as I was raising you know, a child or children and stuff of that, that ilk, um, I really didn't experience much because my way of thinking back then was really askewed. Um, now I'm just finding more about myself, that whole manly side of me now and more demanding side and more expectation side. I just have so much more to do before my time is up. So of course, with your 10 year anniversary coming up, yeah, by all means, taking that trip is going to be tremendous. So definitely, uh, you know, kudos to you guys for that. Hell yeah. So it's all about travel. It's, all, it's basically live your life. And that's a lot of the advice I give to people. I give to friends. Um, it's just worry about what's better for you. My, my other best friend, Becky, that lives in upstate New York, she's getting married in October. And I've already taken the time off and I'll be going up there for four days so I can be there for her wedding. And a lot of times she's messaged me that because she's stressed on what to plan on what to do this. And I told her, I said, dude, it's your wedding between you and your fiance and you and her 
what matters is what are the two of you want what's going to be enjoyable for you save your money like don't plan a big huge party reception i mean if you want to do that then do that but remember at the end of the day this is your wedding this is your day you're not doing this for other people you're doing this for yourself so you do what you want to do if you want to splurge and go all out because that's what you guys want to do by all means do it if you want to go somewhere in between or you want to be minimum do that whatever i mean i am down for whatever they want to do and maybe if in the end it's like hey it gets to the point that you want it to be so private that I don't even attend it. I'm okay with that too. It's going to hurt, but I accept it and I understand. She's like, no, of course you're going to be there. I said, but listen, I'm just telling you, worry about what you, the two of you want. Don't overspend if it's not what you want to do because you can save that money for your honeymoon. Go do things you want to do. That's, that's why I always tell people, stop doing things for other people. Uh, and... I kind of am a hypocrite because I'm a people pleaser, but I've also learned, begun to learn my limitations and how far I'll go for something. And I know when to say no. Like, I've, I've learned these things. And because I've too many people have taken advantage of me uh, over the years. So, at a point that it's actually leaked over to my current job, but it's worked out for me very well. And so I just try to tell people do what is going to be good for you. Are you going to hurt someone's feelings because you said no? Figure out the best way to say something, but at the end of the day, it's your life. It's your happiness. Because you made this person happy for five minutes, but it's going to make you feel miserable for like the next month, two months. Why? Why? What was the point of it? So, what am I trying to tell people? Live your best life. Ho is life. Don't be a dick. Things like that. <laughs> and of course, the whole is life always pops up. So my question to you, and this will be a little bit of a short one, I guess. I mean, depending upon how you uh, you take it. Aside from your husband, with all due respects to him, of course, what brings Ashley peace after a long, hard day, hard week, hard month? When she sits down in her easy chair, what brings her peace? Oh, silence. Silence, for fucking sure. I enjoy coming home and I'm, no one's talking to me. So I know how you said outside of Hazem, but and I know I talked about this in the past episode, is Hazem and I don't talk a lot when we get home. We can just be alone together and it's fine. And because working in customer service, you spend the day, people in your face, on the phone. You have that customer service persona that you're performing the entire day. By the time I get home, I don't want to answer questions. I don't want to talk. I don't I don't want to do all these things. I just want to sit and relax and just enjoy my own peace. Whether it's like just scrolling randomly through my phone, I'm just laying there, playing with my dog. I mean, just, it's just basically having my own little bit of peace by myself. No one to bother me because it's my social battery. It's drained. So there are some days after work, I'm in the mood to talk. I'm in the mood to talk to somebody, and unfortunately the person I always want to talk to is my dad, and he doesn't he doesn't exist anymore, so that doesn't work out for me. Um, but besides that, my mom, I love her to death. I love my mom, but she's a talker. She's someone that's um, inquisitive, and she loves, again, she loves to talk, and that is her, But and I love her. But that's not me. That's not how I am. So I try when she visits, I try to accommodate how her feelings are and what she likes to do, which is talking to me and knowing how my day went. But I've told her so many times, hey, when I get home from work, just give me an hour. Give me an hour, hour and a half. Let me do to myself. But there's so many times I'll come home, I go into my room, and I hear Ash, Ashley. Hey, Ash. <laughs> and... It just like it makes me see red and want to throw like my computer chair through my fucking window Because again, I understand when she's visiting she really is just here by herself all day And when I get home, it's a person to talk to so I try to be compassionate and seeing from her point of view But this is where I'm like mom, please give me a goddamn hour Because I'm gonna fucking lose my shit. It gets so to some days. I've said hey, I have had a very, very bad day. I really don't want to talk right now. Please give me some space. I will, we can talk later, but I just need my space. And then <laughs> it's like 30 seconds. And then 
talks and asks questions and says things for 10 to 15 minutes and I'm like, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening, I'm going, "Uh uh-huh, okay, because I don't want to snap, I don't want to get mad, and I say again, hey, just need, just, just let me be for a little bit, I just, I had a bad day. Okay, he continues to talk. And there was one time I, it got so bad for me that I made an excuse that I had to go to the gym or something. And I went to go sit in a parking lot for like an hour and a half because I just needed, that's how, that's how I am is that's besides my husband, my peace is my alone time. I need my little section of alone time or else I will go on a murder spree. That's it. It's the, my, so my peaceful solitude time slot that I get every day is what keeps me from being civilized to going on a murder spree. I can definitely understand that. For me, my piece is pretty much just like yours. It's just the most simple thing. I'll sit on my couch, sit on my chair, even sit on my floor and just close my eyes for 20 seconds and just enjoy the peace and just enjoy where I'm at in life right now. And I don't know, I was never a party guy. I was never hanging around a lot of people. I was never really a conversationalist, which is odd considering we're doing a podcast right now, but I was never any of those things. I just wanted peace and quiet at a very young age and always made the joke, I'm going to be the old guy just wanting peace and quiet. That's the only thing I want in life. See, Are you going to get peace and quiet when you have Sherbert the cat around? My son is taking Sherbert the cat with him. It's just going to be I me. That's going to be my next thing I was going to ask you is, hey, are you keeping Sherbert or is Sherbert going? Sherbert is going. It's going to be me and my microphone. That's pretty much it for the rest of my days. Sherbert the cat, and of course he's giving me the evil death stare. Yes, he's going with my little one. That is no problem. So, but what if it's in the event that your your offspring is moving someplace and can't have a pet because, you know, pet costs are extremely high it's like you pay the pet deposit you have to pay all this what if he's in the spot it's like hey dad i can't take sure with the cat he's yours now then there's gonna be a knock at your door with a box labeled from abu dhabi with air holes poked in it um and with a cat inside named sherbert the cat courtesy of the walker ac experience i, I want to say yes to that but at the same time like that cat and my german shepherd are gonna fight Mostly the cat is going to want to claw at Odin's nose because he's curious and he wants to play. And the cat's going to, like, fuck around and find out. And Odin, of course, is going to fuck around and find out. (laughs) But as you know, from what you've seen, pictures, Sherbert the cat has personality. And, uh, yes, he's been acclimated to our family, I guess. But I'm more than happy to give him away. Nothing personal. So just, just the way I feel about that. I just see it now. Your son's like, hey, I can't take the cat because money. And where I'm living, I can't have animal, so you hold animal. Thanks, Dad. Preach. And you are gonna have, and you and Sherbert are going to be best buds for the rest of your days. No, he will be sold. He will be sold for beer money. I don't, I don't even drink beer. He will be sold for beer money. Well, you won't do that. You love Sherbert. Don't know what you're talking about. As we wind down this show, what else is, <laughs> what else is on your mind other than you taking Sherbert to cat when it's time? Nothing, just because you are saying the exact same thing that my husband says about my German Shepherd. Where I don't think he loves my German Shepherd. So, I mean, because he's raised him since he was a puppy. So you're the same way. You love that cat. You just don't like to admit it. I don't know what you're talking about. I was on mute. Um, I didn't hear what you said. I, you said something about comedy. Um, so, yes, we can if definitely you were on mute, then I just want to be able to hear you. You could still hear me. I'm giving away my podcast secrets. Damn you. Damn you yeah. to hell. But I will, I will save this for another time. Um, I got, obviously, I'm going to wrap the show up with three things. One is the plug, one is my ending sequence, and then there's another thing which is now going to become a new routine of mine. But we're going to start with the plugins. Um, of course, people can find me on Instagram, uh, Majestic Nerd Lady. That's the only place you're going to find me. Um, and when I ever, you know, start taking serious the other Instagram page for this podcast, I'll announce that too. But in the meantime, it's just Instagram, Majestic Nerd Lady. That's it. That's where you can find me. Um, everything else regarding this podcast or whatnots or what have you, Adrian will share with that with you right now. 
Absolutely. You can find us on podbean.com under Walker, ac76.podbean.com. Reach out to us via slacking majestically 01yahoo.com. We just now opened up a TikTok for the Walker AC Experience. That's where you can find us, Walker AC Experience. It's all about business, all about podcasts, all about uplifting stuff. Nothing too personal, so let's not keep it personal, folks. And of course, on the other free platforms below, reach out to us and talk to us. We might talk to you, probably not, but we'll acknowledge that you said something to us productive. Yeah, same, big same. Um, you know, okay, well, the next, the next, you know, part of business, you know, I have to give a shout out. Hello, Vaughn. How are you? Stop it. Stop it. I'll cut this short right now. That's evil. We'll just next thing and actually I do have a joke for you before you tell yours Oh my god, okay, Let, uh, or actually hey, we can we can change that we can wrap the show up with your with you making a joke No, 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 no. We have to keep the root of all Ashley original. I'll tell one and then you can tell yours Okay. Yeah, see if I can <sighs> Dip into my dad joke bag Guy walks into a bar with a monkey on his shoulder Puts the monkey down, has a beer. Bartender goes, interesting. Does the monkey do anything special? Guy goes, absolutely. Guy looks at the monkey, whacks him in the back of the head as hard as he could. Monkey pulls on the guy's pants and gives him moral. Bartender goes, that's amazing. Bartender goes, can I try? And, and, and the guy goes, sure, just don't hit me so hard. Uh, no. Oh, no. That, no, that's that's not okay. Versus your humor? Okay, all right. That, that's not okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Uh huh. Now you know how no. I feel. Now you know how I feel. That, no. Mine is you know family themed humor. We, we know that my sense of humor is like PG and under. What, what's wrong with you, man? Your poor, poor virgin ears. I apologize sincerely because I know how much of a beacon of purity you are. So I will. I am. I am. I am just scarred and I just don't know what I'm going to do with life now. I have to reconsider my morals, my faith. Um, I just have to really rethink my life now. It's okay though. You're my thoughts and prayers, but I know the joke of Ashley will make this all better. Well, I guess so. What group of people never get angry? What? Nomads. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>